After talking with a local shopkeep, Leighton and Luke learn of the Herzum Museum. Further conversation reveals that the museum is their best bet for information on the Elysium box. Their next destination now clear, Luke and Leighton head to the north part of town to visit the museum. Good morning everybody, it's Minan and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we got to this creepy ghost town and we were looking for the Elysium Box. In this episode, uh, you think I would learn the, how to do these intros by now, but I feel like this is going to be a recurring problem throughout the entire Layton franchise. Oh, well. We started getting these old diary things as well, so we're unveiling uh, pieces of a larger mystery as we go along, I presume. Uh, for now, let's go to the right, because I think that's not progress. And of course, I'm totally wrong. Quick, hi, Professor. I see Inspector Chelmy over there. No need for a lot, Luke. He's likely just gathering information about Dr. Schrader's case. It seems he's finally figured out that the key to solving it lies here in full sense. <laughs> it's as if the Inspector's almost got a handle on things for once. So let me confirm. This here is the man you witnessed asking around about the Elysium box. No doubt about it now. What the fruit do I even do with this guy? What? Yep, the man in the photograph is the one. I'd remember that beard anywhere. Hmm, well, that seals the deal. Just as I suspected, it seems he did make his way to Full Saints. Come along now, Barton. We're moving on. Hmm, oh yes, sir. Right behind you, sir. Uh, let's see, lobster sounds good right now. Luke loves lobster. Uh, what do we got? Anything around here? We got a door that I didn't want to go into. And it's going to create more text I don't want to read yet. Have a look at these photos of the town, Luke. Whoever took them clearly has a fine eye for detail. But if you look closely, you could see that these pictures are chronologically out of order. Do you think you can figure out where each picture belongs? Sudden puzzle, puzzle number 72, scrambled photos. Four photographs decorate the wall of Joseph's photo studio. Each photo depicts the same area and was taken at the exact same time of day. However, each photo was taken at a different point in time, and if you look carefully, you could picture you could figure out the order in which these pictures were taken. Enter your answer using the letters attached to each picture, starting with the earliest, like so, A, B, C, and D. Hint number one. Start by scanning all four pictures for differences between them. For example, maybe the buildings are different in one or two of the photos. Hint number two, photo C is the only one where the stairs aren't illuminated because there's no visible street light. Both photos C and D are missing the big orange building in the background. By contrast, the building and the street light are visible in photos A and B. Hint number three, the door to the photo studio is the same color in all pictures except A. Also in B, one of the restaurant's windows is broken. However, the window is patched up in A, so A must have been taken after B. The solution is that C was taken first? Like, how do I... So, how do we do this exactly? I think we're inputting the answer... Okay. Um... Do they want letters? I guess they want letters. Okay, so... C was taken first. D was taken second. B was taken third, and then A was taken last. Here goes! Maiden's apprentice strikes again! Kind of a weird layout, but okay. Good eye, the correct order is CDBA. And that's a lot of singing text telling you how that is. There we are. If these photos are any indication, Folsons has quite a rich and lengthy history. How neat! With enough of these pictures, I bet you could see exactly how the town was developed. You bring up an interesting point, Luke. But if these photos are that old, why do they look so new? Now that you mention it, I suppose they do look new. Normally, with shots this old, the image is a bit more deteriorated. I wonder what method this studio uses to keep these photos immaculate. And we got another camera piece, magically. I don't know how this camera got scattered all the way to the depths of the ghost town, and I don't know how I got that hint coin on the first tap, but whatever. I'm just gonna look around a bit more. Like, I don't know, like, do you guys like this song? Because, like, it just bugs me so much, and they bring it back for multiple latent games. Like, it's a famous song for some reason. I don't know why. But whatever. Maybe I just 
do not have the connoisseurial desire or expertise of pure latent bliss or whatever. I don't talk to this guy, I guess. My, these photos look stunningly new for their age. How do you manage that? Sorry, sir, but that's a, well, it's a bit of a trade secret. Well, he was useless. Like, I was, like, combining, I was like, hey, he was useful. Like, I was trying to be sarcastic, but then I was just, like, blunted right last second. This guy is a puzzle for us. Sorry, sir, but I can't let you in that. Like that. We've got a dress code, see? I'll need to take that hat from you. What did you say to me? I mean, hmm. So you're saying that I that we can enter if I give you a hat? Puzzle number 68, hat trick. Uh, in the UK version, it's called hat etiquette because reasons. Taking Felix's request for that hat at face value, you must now find another hat to hand over to the, from the pattern shown below. The hat you're looking for will be the same shape and size as the one shown above the pattern, but it might not be facing in the same direction. Use your stylus to outline your answer. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can just find it right here and now. Um, I don't see it. I could have just lied to you and be like, oh, I see, it's super easy. But no, I'm gonna be honest with you and I don't see it right away. Hint number one. The shape is identical to the example hat, so while you may find the same shapes that some shapes resemble the hat in question, outlining one of those won't count as a valid solution. Study the points where the lines of several shapes cross each other to find the exact match for the example hat. Hint number two, the hat hidden in the pattern has been turned on its side. Hint number three, focus your search on the lower left section of the picture. Uh, do I see it? Lower left, it's on its side. I still don't quite see it. I see something that, like, might be, but, like, it's uneven on some sides. The solution is... Hmm. Do I draw on here? I guess I do. It's gonna be really crummy if this doesn't read properly. You want me to draw all the way up to there? Okay, if you say so. Just do that. Um. Huh. Yeah, like, it doesn't work properly. I don't know what they're talking about. Is this, like, even the same picture? Like, I'm getting super confused here. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Uh, I was getting, like, a bit higher up than I should have. So, let's try right here. And there you go. Hopefully that works. This should do the trick. I could see that one being like kind of forgiving with the tracing just because it was a bit wonky and whatnot. Sneaky, good job spotting that hidden hat. Now the professor has a hat to give to Felix. You know, he could just be like, uh, dude, I didn't ask for a puzzle. I asked for your hat on your head. Just give it to me. But we could never let him have such a thing. Professor is not Professor Layton without his lucky hat. There we are. As requested, I have provided you with that hat. Uh, yeah, like he doesn't even understand. Um, Professor, I don't think that's quite what he meant. Be that as it may, I'm not taking my hat off. Let's go, Luke. But I was really looking forward to stopping in for a snack. A gentleman never takes off his hat, Luke. And that's all I have to say about it. This is too deep for me. <laughs> what the fruit? And he gives us a hamster toy. <laughs> like, that was just so stinking funny. Uh, you're just about the strangest two customers I've ever met. Even though we never actually, uh, came into the restaurant, so we're not technically customers. Uh, anything else around here? But yeah, just, I love any of the moments that come up about Lane's hat because, like, he refuses to take it off. What could possibly be below or beneath the legendary hat of Professor Layton? Just like a double D mystery the world may never know. Uh, got anything around here? I guess we're good to go. Did not mean to do that. Don't want to walk into the suitcase. I want to... Oh, we could go upwards. Before we do that, let's see if the other way is a dead end. Oh, it is a dead end. Sir, a minute, please! Oh, hello there. You're the fellow with Inspector Chilme, yes? The name's Barton, sir. I'm a constable serving under Inspector Chilme, sir. 
I feel obligated to let you know that may you want to reconsider bringing the child up this way. Why? What's up ahead? Things best left unknown to your older lad. My advice is to do an about face and leave the area. I don't think he'll budge on this, Luke. We'll have to find another path leading up that way. I wonder if I would have been able to go over there if I went to the left first, because Chelmy and Barton were on the other side until I uh, stepped in and saw them leave. So I might have messed myself up there by accident. If I go up here now, we might be able to just walk around. Uh, what the heck is that? It's a dog named Precious. Does is, is he have a diaper on? He doesn't appear to be in a very good mood, Luke. Let me see if I can find out what the problem is. Uh, hey there, fellow. Graf, graf, graf. Yo! I like how Layton just does not care. He's getting mauled by a dog. He's like, hmm, indeed. Good heavens, Luke. Are you hurt? I don't think he's in the mood for the conversation right now. Indeed. Let's find another way through town. Passing through here is rather difficult right now. Dead ends every way we go, it seems. We got hint coins, though, which is nice. Except we're not using them, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, get anything at all. I think we're good. You know, there's probably one more here. I can't find it. Let's go around. And there's one more right there. And one more right there. Very, very nice. And one more for good measure. Uh, we could go there. Well, that's our point destination, but I want to go back around. Oh, we can't. So here's the museum. Let's have a closer look at the gate, shall we? Okay, if you insist. This must be the museum. But the gate's shut tight. I don't think they're open right now. I was hoping we'd find some useful information inside. There's no sense in standing around waiting. For the time being, let's continue our investigation elsewhere. The resolution. Now we could go to the left and see what Barton didn't want us to see. Oh my god, it's a person! How terrifying! Well, actually, it's a Professor Layton person, so they are terrifying. Greetings, strangers. Let me guess, you've come here seeking fame and fortune. Actually, we are searching for an item called the Elysium Box. Does that name sound familiar? Wow, that's a fantastic name. Here's a puzzle for sharing that great name with me. My god, they don't even try sometimes with the puzzle segues. Oh, we're skipping ahead a lot. Puzzle number 117, three couples. So, well, I guess this isn't entirely accurate, but on the guide it says at this point I should have all the camera pieces, but we're skipping ahead a lot, so that might not be true. A yellowed photograph shows three couples. In the photo, no man is standing directly above his spouse. Of the three women, two sisters, two are sisters and are sitting next to each other. The elder sister's husband is the man without a mustache. Everyone in the picture is wearing a hat, save the husband of the younger sister. The woman unrelated to the other two is sitting in front of the younger sister's husband. So can you find the man in this bunch who is married to neither sister? Choose from A, B, or C. Hint number one. There's no need to decipher the relationships of every person in the picture. Just focus on finding the answer to the question at hand. A.K.A. try. Hint number two. Who's married to the eldest sister? Using the clues you've been given, you should be able to find the answer to that question almost instantaneously. Hint number three. While we're on the subject, finding the husband of the younger sister should be a breeze as well. With those two men identified, this puzzle is as good as solved. And the solution is a B. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Great job. The answer is B. Finding the answer to this one just requires close reading, which I don't want to do. Good job. Getting good luck finding that whatchamacallit. You know, the thingy with the great name. I bet when you open it, a genie pops out and um, grants you a wish or something. Neato. Can I wish for... Uh, I don't even know. I was going to like make a joke about like Lady Lady and be like, I wish for Lady Lady to be good or could I wish for them to not continue on with that because the franchise had a really good ending and they're ruining it with this thing now. Oh boy, I could like go on a big old sinking tangent about that. But uh, just like with Phoenix Wright, how I said I only want to let's play the first three Phoenix Wright games, I only plan on LPing the first six Layton games, so don't hold your breath for any Lady Layton in the future. But as for the camera, uh, we got one, two, three, four... Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh wait, no, that's not even. 
four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight pieces? I feel like that's not enough. Uh, let me see if I could check this thing, if it's going to tell me exactly how many there are. Okay, there are 11 camera pieces, so I don't have it quite yet, but maybe some puzzles we've missed will give us the last ones we need. So we're getting close, though, which is really cool. This game actually has less chapters than Curious Village, but I think it is a bit longer and has definitely has more puzzles. So uh, kind of weird how that works out, just like ironing out what is and isn't necessary, getting their bearings straight. Do you see that watchtower, Professor? There's something very suspicious about it, isn't there? Uh, is it? Well, it looks peculiar, I'll give it that. There's this guy over here you can barely notice. Oh, he looks really creepy. Uh, it's not every day I see new faces. Are you visiting from out of town? Yes, in a way, but we're not here to sightsee. We're searching for the antique known as the Elysium Box. Have you heard of it? <laughs> no, that's the first I've heard of it. I wish I had some information for you. Oh, I just can't let visitors to our great town go away empty-handed. Yeah, it's not a keychain, but please take this puzzle of mine as a souvenir of full sense. Jeez, the Olsen twins sure went downhill ever since Full House ended. Also, rest in peace, Aunt Becky. Five shapes are arranged in a sequence, but the fourth shape is missing. Use the four visible shapes to determine whether A, B, or C should be inserted as the fourth shape in the sequence. Hint number one. Rotate each shape 90 degrees to get a fresh perspective of the puzzle. Hint number two. If you look closely, you might notice that there is a number visible within each of the shapes. Hint number three. Once you rotate the shapes, you'll be able to see a number hidden within them. The solution is, once again, a B. This should do the trick. Huh. Wonderful. Usually the answer is always C, but now in this episode it's always B. Nice work there, fellows. I hate to burst your bubble, but if you lead if your lead on this Elysium box led you here, you may be out of luck. See, many of our residents who were full sense experts skedaddled a few years ago. It all started over a strange rumor that spread through the town like wildfire. Ah, oh, so even if we are in the right place <coughs> Pardon me, sir. Even if we are in the right place, there may be no one left to ask. Tell me, what was this rumor? Some silly thing about a curse, but I'm not entirely clear on it, to be honest. But I often find myself wondering where all those people who left the full sense ended up. And we get another puzzle. And a hint coin. Just gonna boop around a little bit. So, something that I've been doing recently in my spare time. I recently got a hold of a certain fan translation cartridge. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there is a single Chibi Robo game, besides the Wii remake of the GameCube one that should have come to America that uh, never left Japan. It is a sequel, sort of a direct sequel to the first Chibi Robo game. It's called Chibi Robo Clean Sweep by the fan translation, but like the official title, there's a lot of pathways here. I kind of want to go back. Uh, the full title in Japan is called, you're, you look stressed out. Oh, did you see that? I want to see what? The ghost, of course. One just floated all the oogity boogity, I swear. Oh, darn, I must have missed it. That's a very chill reaction to hearing about a ghost. That's the 12th time today it's flown by. Golly, this must be the spot for ghost watching. I've been here for hours. It's all just so fascinating. I'm totally captivated. I'm sure it's all very exciting, but would you care to take a break and have a cup of tea? Oh, the distressed people always want tea, so like, it's not enough to just make the tea. I have to like give it to them? What if I don't have the stuff they want? Take a tea break, let's make it a mysterious one. Woo! This means I want something sweet and kind of unusual. You're not gonna tell me that what you want. I think I'm just gonna wait on this because I don't think something mysterious and wonderful. I think I'm gonna wait on this because I he's gonna still yeah, he's still stressing out she. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> um I'm just gonna wait. Hmm? I cannot get a singing sentence out of this episode. Oh, Mr. Beluga, it's been ages. I do hope you found what you're looking for. Mm, I wish I told Samuel to track it down, but with the boys, about as useful as a broken pocket watch. Oh, don't fret like that. It leaves wrinkles in that distinguished brow of yours. Tee -hee. What do you say, Mr. B? Would you like to come inside and unwind for a bit? 
Professor, do you see that? Mr. Beluga just went into that cabaret. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Uh, we're getting all turned around. Like, there's so many pathways we could go to. And then this just brings us back here. We go this way. Okay, Barton's magically gone now because it'd be kind of lame. It never hurts to ask. Let's start with the woman standing out in front. Uh, if I go this way, I just want to, like, get all the... Is that Granny Riddleton's shack? Say, there's a shack again. Granny Riddleton's shack. Hmm. If we overlook puzzles along the course of our journey, we know where to go, don't we, Luke? Seems she has houses all over the place. As I was saying about Chibi Robo, so, like, there's a Chibi Robo game called Welcome Home Chibi Robo Happy Rich Big Sweep that never left Japan. And there's a fan translation for it. I got a hold of a... A cartridge that had the fan translation on it so I've been playing that recently it's okay so far I'm having fun with it it's just like it's so weird having another chibi robo game that actually feels like a chibi robo game so I'm enjoying it more than photo finder and zip lash at the very least but even still like it doesn't have anything on the original I don't think anything will ever top that which makes me very sad that there's no remake or re-release of that one at least not in America there isn't uh, but I want to go down here real quick because I know for a fact she wants T2. Oh, I know that for a fact as well, but I know that if you examined the uh, gate at the museum, then you talk to this guy? Uh, does he want... Well, yeah, I know he wants T, but I don't want to make him T. God, so much words. He's just going to be asking about that. I guess there's nothing here. I'm just getting all kerbobble fall, but I really shouldn't just be doing this. We're going to get all the stuff eventually, so I shouldn't be too worried about doing everything in a certain order. This lady's new, I think. Oh, Folsons used to be the home to many families at noble birth. The Duke Harrison's discovered a vast gold deposit in the outskirts of town, which changed everything. Folsons developed rapidly, but the world of gold, the word of the gold brought in all sorts of unsavory types. It's such a shame. This used to be a, such an enchanting town. That's all you have to say, which is unfortunate, because it's not useful in the slightest. And now she doesn't want tea. Now she has a puzzle! Okay. Aye, what's that on face? Don't you know adults aren't allowed to pout? Honestly, I can't stand to see you look like that. So here's a puzzle. Cheer you up, will ya? So maybe the other guy will have a puzzle for us if we go back to him. How old am I? Hi there! Yeah, I know, I'm all cute and stuff, but I'm also really good at puzzles. The difference between Mama's age and Papa's age is the same as my age. Oh, and my Papa's age... Oh, uh, wait, what? Oh, and my big sister is twice my age, which happens to be one-third my mom's age, and one more thing, in five years, I'll be my sister's age. Okay, enough hints, how old am I? My head hurts! Hint number one. When you've got a puzzle like this one, what you want to do is go over all the info you've got and find the stuff you could use. The difference between my parents' ages probably won't help you, but my sister's age could be kind of useful. Is she the one giving us these hints? They're in brackets, so possibly. Oh, I also forgot to hit that. Hint number two. My sister is twice my age. Owen is five years, so I'll be the same age as my sister. Hint number three. Read hint two really carefully, okay? Five years ago, my sis was the same age as I am now, and she's now twice my age. Uh, the solution is that Joni is a five years old. That's a really crummy five, but the game likes it, so that's good enough for me. Puzzle solved. And there we have 1,700 picarats. Hey, not bad. Papa's 35 and Mama's 30, meaning the difference in their age is the same as my age, like I said. So my big sis, she is 10, that's twice my age, and a third of my mama's. In five years, will be 10, and my sister will be 15. Can you believe it? I'll practically be a grown-up by then. Yeah, that's how it works. <sighs> hey, perfectly good, smarty pants. So good, in fact, I think you deserve a reward. Uh, I got picarettes. Are you going to give us, like, a camera piece? What kind of reward? Oh, that, was, that wasn't even Luke's voice. The best kind. A story! Okay, then here goes. See, a long time ago, there was another family in this town with, as rich as the Herzens. But one of the younger daughters got her heart broken by some boy and decided to leave town. It could just be a story somebody made up, but if it's true, that boy must have been a total creep. And we got a puzzle, and that's it. Now if we head back down here... Uh, now she wants tea. My god, everyone wants stinking tea! He'll give us a puzzle. Okay, cool. So after you examine the gate up at the museum and come back to this guy, he'll have a puzzle for you. You're full since now, kids. All you gotta dream big, because anything's possible here. Maybe when they have, like, those little things pop up where it's, like, 
repeating the thing that we just learned, like, Luke and Layton are gonna go to do this thing now. Maybe at that point, that means, like, new puzzles open up to us with characters that we've already talked to. Uh, maybe that's how it works. Puzzle number 60, Plaza Puzzle. You can have the word puzzle in your puzzle. That's, like, puzzleception or something. So there's a big old statue in the middle of this plaza. When you take away the area occupied by the statue, the plaza looks kind of donut-like in shape. What you gotta do is divide this donut plaza into two identically shaped parts using only one line. Oh, and before you get any big ideas, the dotted lines shown below won't cut because they're, they're actually two lines. Draw your answer on the touch screen. Oh, I see. Hint number one. In the example illustration, the plaza has been divided by two lines, which makes the answer invalid. If the the fact that you need to use a single line to answer the problem is key, since you can use only one line, you know you won't be solving this one by drawing lines through the middle of the plaza, right? Hint number two. Even if you avoid drawing your line through the center of the plaza, no single straight line will divide the plaza into two pieces that are the same shape. By the way, did you notice the goal here isn't to make the two pieces that are the same size, but merely the same shape? Keep that in mind. Hint number three. If you're still having trouble, you should know that the single line you need to draw is a circle. The only remaining question is where to place it so that the two pieces of the plaza have the same shape and are directly proportional to the other. The solution is... Uh... Huh. You just gotta quite literally create a donut and draw a circle around it. This should do the trick. And there we have it. All those uh, tracing ones always worry me because like, I'm waiting for the smiling lane to make sure I like drew it properly or the game's going to recognize it. Lots of folks come to full sense dreaming of fame and glory, but you guys seem different. Take it from someone who's been around the block. Stay away from the woods northwest of town. Guess where we're going? We're gonna go northwest of town. She still wants tea. And I know I apologize if this episode was if this episode was a bit kerbobble fobbled. I think I might end this one off right now just so we could have a fresh start next time. But yeah, everyone in this town wants sinking tea, it seems. It never hurts to ask, yeah, we're gonna do that late and don't worry, but first of all, the Grand Realty's down there. Just trying to get my bearings straight of everything that we've seen up to this point. We haven't gone up here yet, have we? Do you see that watchtower, Professor? Yeah, we saw that already. God, there's so many things here. Okay, I'm gonna... Go this way? Oh, God. Oh, jeez. This town is really stinking massive. Alright, we're gonna end this episode off now just so I could, like, do things, like, one step at a time. Let's go with a love shack, because I think that's the most interesting thing that we want to see is... Whatever his name is, Mr. Beluga getting busy with his, with his bad self over at the Love Shack. Next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, we're gonna walk in on some diabolical deeds with Mr. Beluga. Or probably not, they're probably just talking about crumpets or something. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.